Okay, so there was a question that was asked, and the question was, what is the difference between measures of central tendency and measures of dispersion? So you'll find that these, these two concepts are very fundamental uh, in descriptive statistics, and it's important that you can be able to, dis to discriminate between the two and distinguish between the two. So what I'm going to do is, um, going to use the normal distribution to illustrate the idea of uh, central tendency and dispersion. Okay, so my normal distribution is supposed to be symmetrical, but yeah, I'm not an artist, so forgive me for that. So you'll find that here in the center, we have the mean, median, and mode. So these are three types of averages, and when it's with the normal distribution, because it's a symmetrical uh, distribution, and uh, assuming that it's standardized, therefore the mean, median, and mode will be equal. So now these three are the ones that are called the measures of central tendency, meaning that in a data set, they are the average, or you, call, you could call them the center, you know, or the typical number. So when you hear people talking about average, it's not too high, not too low, but somewhere in the center. So that's what that's why even the term central tendency talks about center, you know. So they tend towards the center, basically. So the mean, median, mode are the measures of cent central tendency and their averages. Then when we go to measures of dispersion, we're saying by how much are we missing the center, right? Let's say uh, the center was the target. So by how much are we missing the center? So somebody could say, okay, this is minus one standard deviation uh, plus one standard deviation. So we're saying uh, this point here and this point here uh, miss the target, which is the center by one standard deviation. So uh, there are types, of, there are different types of standard uh, of measures of dispersion. Uh, the easiest one is the range. The range is just saying the biggest value in the data set minus the smallest value in the data set. Then you have something called the interquartile range. Interquartile range is just saying um, let's try and improve the range because the range is uh, prone to uh, being affected by outliers. So let's just use the 50, middle 50% 50 of the data, right? Uh, and discard the rest because uh, this is what is susceptible to outliers. So let's just use the middle 50%. So you take your Q1 and Q3, the difference is the interquartile range. Then you have the variance and the standard deviation. Now these two are better because you use every value, so you find the average distance away from the mean. So the standard deviation is actually uh, a squared is actually is equal to the variance. So meaning that the standard deviation is the square root of the variance. So if you take note of these different differences to say. These three, the green ones, are the measures of central tendency, and the black ones are the measures of what? Of dispersion. Then you will never go wrong, and you always understand the concept of, um, of descriptive statistics. So as an illustration, let's say 100, 100 uh, learners in a class wrote an exam, and then their arithmetic average was 50%, and the standard deviation was 10. So we're saying that basically, um, the average mark was 50, a plus or minus, that's like a, almost like an allowance, like an error allowance type, um, plus minus 10%. So in other words, we're saying the 50 would be here in the center, and then you have one standard deviation, which is 40, one standard deviation, which is 60. So that is uh, your, your middle uh 67 percent or so right so it's important that you uh you understand these concepts 
because they will, they will be applied everywhere in statistics, data science, and other areas of your life. So thank you very much, and I hope this helped.